is true. So if you've eaten, we don't need to keep looking for food. So if you have eaten, actually, uh, if you haven't eaten is the specific detail here. Um, <laughs> no, did the stream die? The stream didn't die, did it? OBS says I'm broadcasting. Okay. Bizarre. Like, OBS didn't even... Oh, no, but it says I'm in a, a new stream. That I've only been online for 50 seconds. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> why? Why, oh, why? I can't win. I really can't. Well, this has now turned into three videos I get to smash together. Thanks for joining me for part three of today's stream that will be over actually pretty shortly. <laughs> Alright, um, so if you haven't eaten... How do we do this? Uh, so if you haven't eaten yet, right? If you're starving and haven't eaten, you need to go back and... Um, and fix it. You need to go to a storage shed, probably. Which means we have to modify your current job. I have a bug in the room. Oh well, he likes the ceiling. As long as he's not bothering me, I'm not going to squish him. He's here somewhere. He's waiting for his time. Biding his time. Um, okay. If not eaten. <sighs> so this is where we get a little weird. Because we have... Let's see, we have a current job. Right, if we look at our job logic, our current job logic, we should be able to add a subtask. Now, the problem is adding a subtask will put it at the end. And what we need to do is kind of interrupt what we're doing and ensure that this ends up happening next. So if you're chopping a tree, I want the guy to still finish chopping the tree, right? I don't want them to actually, like, stop chopping a tree because he got hungry and immediately stop his task. So adding a subtask isn't going to work. Hmm. So there's a few things I could do. One thing to do would be take your job and put it back in the list of things that people can accomplish. So when you say, I'm hungry, I'm going to put my job back into the list and anyone else can claim it while I go and get myself some food. Um, I kind of like that idea best. The problem is I don't know how to reset a job, so to speak. Because if you're partway through the job, you will have removed subtasks from it. Uh, which can be remedied. We can stop removing things from subtasks. Or we can stop removing subtasks from jobs. Hmm. Crap. <laughs> this is something I haven't actually thought a ton about. Because job interruption is kind of a crazy uh, wormhole of things. That the moment you start in on it... Oh gosh, it's crazy. Um, how about we do this? Um... How about we're just going to hack into the job coordinator for now? And this is kind of the dumbest thing we can do because it, it it essentially waits until somebody is done with his entire job. And that's not exactly what we want here, right? It's really, really an imperfect solution. But until I get a better hierarchy for jobs put in place, I don't really want to do all that right now. Uh, I've actually got a lot of stuff I still need to finish tonight. I've been at this for a few hours, and I kind of want to finish this task, wrap up the stream so I can get back and do a little bit of maintenance, first off on OBS and figure out what's going wrong, and secondly, get some more videos up onto YouTube for you guys to uh, peruse at your leisure. Um, but, let's see here. We'll just hack in here and say if the character node... Um, you know what? Hmm. Let's make us a function real quick. I want a new function 
and I want that new function to be called is hungry. And we're simply just going to say return the hunger remaining is less than hunger maximum divided by 3.0. There we go. And now we find every spot where we've used this exact thing. Oh, or the get hunger stat, I guess, is the more appropriate place. Specifically here. And he's hungry. Nice easy function there. Uh, why am I making is hungry a constant? So it's a constant function. Uh, and what that does is that tells the compiler that nothing is modified inside of this function. So we can do, uh, first off, it lets the compiler know so the compiler can do uh, more complex optimizations when release mode is set. The other thing it does is if this uh, controller is marked as constant, it allows us to run this function on this controller because the, con the function is marked as constant so we know that nothing changes inside of it. It will also tell us if we do something like, or it should tell us, if I do something like this, now you can see it's complaining, right? Expression must have a modifiable L value, and it's not modifiable because we're marked as constant. So it's another, uh, not only is it a good safeguard against programmers who like to change things or change the intention of things, but also the other thing it does is it makes sure that the compiler is enforcing your intentions upon whoever is using your code. Now in this case, it's just me. So I don't really care about the intentions of other programmers at time. Like there's one other person working on this project and if he needs to ask me something, he's kind of got my phone number. But when you're working on bigger projects, obviously you don't want to um, kind of jump out in the middle of things and uh, be able to or have to ask an engineer who's you know made that code. And sometimes that's not possible either. So. Okay, so we're going to go to the job logic, and we're going to call this a, uh, a feed me job. Of which, um, the feed me job, we will add a subtask. Uh, so, let's see here. Uh, a new subtask. First thing, I guess we have to figure out what is the closest building, the closest storage building in the settlement. Uh, and then we need to actually set some tasks in motion for ourselves to deal with that information. So first, I'm going to shift this up here because I need it. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab our game world. Come on. Oh, game world is all undercased for once. Weird. Uh, find nearest controller in settlement. Um, we are going to use the character node, get target node, get world position. And we're also going to hand it the controller type. And the controller type is what? What is that controller type? These are all defined at the top. Storage shed. Okay. Uh, so this should be a shed controller. Um, if the shed controller is not a null pointer. Uh, ooh, so this isn't even something I thought of. Uh, you could run, you could say, oh, I want to go to the closest shed controller, and then the closest shed controller just doesn't have food in it. Uh, that can be problematic. Um, hmm. This is problematic, because if there isn't any food there, you should go to the next shed. 
But I don't have a way to find... I guess... I wonder if I have like a get all of type or something. Uh, get... Controller gets... Let's see. Get... Uh, Because we can grab the settlement group node and just like look through all of those, and that wouldn't be the worst thing I've ever done. Um. Uh... Okay. Okay. First, get total food count. Right. Easiest thing we can do. Uh, and if the total food count is greater than zero, cool. Um. So now we already know that food must exist somewhere. So if you're hung hungry and there is food somewhere, you are going to go hunt for food. Otherwise, you're going to keep going on your way until you starve. Um, so now we know that there is a shed somewhere that has what we need. I'm really curious how this function works. Find controllers in settlement. Is this a private... No, that's a public function, isn't it? Find controllers in settlement. That is a great function. I love that I wrote some of this stuff. <laughs> um, C4 array of some things, I guess, controller pointers, I think. This will be our shed controller array. Find controllers. Oop. We need to call this from the game world. Find controllers in settlement. Okay, controller storage shed. And we need to pass it the array. And it's, yes, okay, cool. So we're going to pass it the shed controller array. Uh, so keeping a list of sheds with food in them is a little overkill. Um, I think the easiest thing to do is just say, every time you need a new job and you happen to be hungry and there is food available somewhere, we are going to go and hunt for the closest shed that also contains food. And that shouldn't be too crazy, right? You shouldn't have a ton of storage sheds. So it shouldn't be too, gra uh, not graphically, too CPU intensive to dig through that list every time. And if it becomes too intensive, we'll fix it, right? We don't really care. We just want this to work. So for i equals zero, i is less than, actually we're not modifying the list, right? So we can do this fancy schmancy. Get list. Huh? Just get list, right? <laughs> yes, that is how programming works. Uh, controller in the shed controller array. Does this work? This looks like it works. I like that it works. Um, static cast this to a storage shed controller. And then there's our controller. Uh, and then we get food. Just to find out. So if this is zero, skip it. Or I guess the other thing, we could do the opposite, right? We could say if it's greater than zero and, let's see, if it's greater than zero, eh, if it's equal to zero, continue. I like that better. We take our failure case, we put it in first, and then we just kind of throw it out and keep going. Um, oh, is it almost time for burgers? Yes. Ah, okay. I definitely have to figure this out soon, uh, or finish this up real soon, because burgers. Ah, burgers. Uh, there's a place near me called St. John's that makes some of the most amazing burgers I have ever had, and this is coming from somebody who used to be a vegetarian. They're good burgers. <laughs> All right. That doesn't mean anything here. Leave the mic for like five seconds. Uh, one, second. one sec. Why am I? Oh, too late. <laughs> <laughs> too late indeed. It's fine. I have a good microphone. I don't know if you guys actually heard my sync going like that. I would be amazed and happy somehow. Okay. Um, let's move this into its own spot real quick because we're going to be using this pointer more than once 
So we don't really want to just like let go of it immediately. So if it doesn't have food, we skip it. Cool. Um, vector 3D. Um, the distance. It is 5.37 p.m. for me. I want burgers sooner rather than later. So I'm finishing this as quickly as I can. Shed controller. Gets. Target node. Gets node. No, not node. Get world position. Right? We have our world position and we're going to subtract out our own position. So we're going to go character node. Get target. Get world position. And then, let's see here. All right, so we've got, let's see, anything else? I need to make sure. <laughs> yeah, 2.30 in the morning. Holy heck. Uh, you in Europe, Ginkgo Bitter? Gink go bitter. I think that's I said that right. I would assume that you're you're at least in Europe with that kind of time. Either that or no, Australia would be too far in the other direction. No, you're you're right. That's Europe. Uh, eight hours from now is about GMT. Yeah. This ought to be one of the best games. <laughs> ought to be, but I keep getting sidetracked by burgers. So we'll see. Yep, Europe. Ha ha! I called it. All right. Let's finish this. If, okay. So one thing we need to do is store a distance somewhere here. So float closest dist, uh, distance. And we're just gonna set this to infinity. And we're gonna say the... Um, Didn't I tell you not to get on there unless I invited you? Oh. We're gonna have a storage shed controller pointer that is our closest shed as well. And that is going to be a null pointer to start. The first time I told her to get off the couch, she like sat with her butt on the couch and her torso down. And, and so what we're going to do is we're going to check really distances sure? here are you really, really to sure? uh, you get off, but only make sure really, really, that really, really sure. we are not only finding a shed with food, but a shed with food that is closer to us than the one that we've currently found. Try the pink and white thing. Dist, let's see, C4 squared magnitude. So, and one, this is a neat little trick you'll see from all over the place. When you're checking magnitude, remember when you find the distance of a hypotenuse, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So you're doing the square root of one side and one other side added together. And what you do is when you square that magnitude, it keeps you from having to do that square root, which is kind of a... a, a somewhat like not a great part. for your performance kind of operation and so what we're going to do is we're just going to use the squared numbers under the assumption that like, if uh, your two squared, squared numbers like, are always so both distances are always going to be squared those distances are always going to compare the same way I know I'm not explaining this terribly well I'm sorry it's because I'm kind of in a slight time constraint because I want food I'm getting really hungry actually so if the squared magnitude is less than the closest distance, so if this one is closer to us, then our closest distance is equal to, and let's just not do this work more than once, uh, squared dist c4 squared. Actually, I think we came up with a different plan. We were going to do, like, uh, distance. Squared dist. There we go equals the squared dist uh, and then finally last step is that our closest shed is this current shed that we have is our shed controller finally last step we have a shed controller um, find controllers so if there's yes 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 okay so if uh, I don't think I'm even going to do this null check here. We're just going to say, and I'll, uh, big I'll get to the ex kind of what that uh, line of stuff is, but it's kind of difficult. There's a lot of stuff going on in there. Uh, Danny Fritz kind of has the best thing going on. I've got namespaces and pointers kind of flying all over the place. 
uh, which is, for somebody who's used to C++ and using pointers in this way, it makes a lot of sense to me, and I know it can look like complete jibber-jabber when um, I'm sitting here like throwing things in here to somebody who doesn't quite have the full grasp on pointers. Pointers are really the hard part there. Um, and especially for somebody who doesn't use a lot of namespacing, then this also looks, um, you know, crazy. So we're going to add a new subtask to our feedme job that is going to be walking to our closest shed. And we're going to get the target node and then get the world position out of that target node. So now we have a place to go. And this should be a new travel... Ooh, actually, we should have a travel to lo not location, but travel to node. Um, how, what's that called? <laughs> uh, travel to it's here somewhere. Travel to node subtask. That's what it is. And we're actually not even gonna pass in the position. We're just gonna pass in the node. So first we say go to this node specifically, this closest shed. Uh, and it's complaining about something. Uh, a, it, oh, it wants a node, and I'm handing it a controller. Let's fix that. And then the other thing we need to do, the feed me job, we need to add a subtask for a new uh, eating, like eat subtask. I, I can't think of a better, oh, um, collects. Can I, co yes, collect resource. Can I just collect resources from it? I don't think I can. I don't think I've structured it correctly. Ah, that would be so cute if I could be like, just collect resources from the shed. Uh, that would honestly, oh my gosh. I really wish that was the way that worked. And let's make sure it is the way that worked. Because if that is how that can work, then we can just be done right now. So it's a collect resource subtask and how collect resource subtask. Okay, so it, re it requires a resource controller type. So that's going to be our shed controller. Shed controller, storage shed controller. How long until you want to leave? Okay. Yeah. I'll come knock on your door when he's about to stop. Uh, node resource. The resource is going to be it wants a node from the storage shed controller. And the problem is it doesn't know what to offer up. Crap. Would you like to try the radish that I got? Oh, you got a radish? This is from work. Oh, these are from work. But Whoa, this is the that... type of radish that we just bought. They're the that seeds. organic crap. No, this is the... <laughs> yes, it's that organic crap. <gasps> oh. Okay. I hope Sorry, that's guys. a spicy piece now, sure. <laughs> no, it tastes good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We should plant the seeds we got today. Well, we don't have to plant them today, but we should plant them. Okay. Um, hmm. Also, there's cucumber. Have a snack. All right. We're going to cheat for this last thing because I want this done. Although I will come back to this later in another stream and actually fix this up. But what we're going to do Crunch, crunch, crunch. I'm sorry. I just realized I saw the microphone input spiking each time I took a bite. <laughs> oh well. Crunch, crunch, crunch. <laughs> um, we're creating a new subtask, and that subtask is called the Feed Me subtask. And the reason I'm using this stupid name. There we go. We want the storage node, and we. It's not going to, uh, it'll be a deposit timer. It's depositing into our mouth, right? Um, so what we're going to do, time to, eh, well, time to store, whatever. Um, eating, there we go. Um, what we're going to do is essentially, uh, we're going to jump in and just make a little feed me subtask that will take from a storage shed and it will just stuff the food right into the character's mouth and re replenish their bar 
and maybe even add a couple food to their inventory so they can eat later without problems. But for now, we just want to make sure that this sucker works. And I put it above the deposit re resource. Deposit resource subtask. So I'm just going to copy and paste because I copied and pasted before. And that should be almost that. So very close. So close. All right. I feel like an addict. I'm almost done. So close, guys. Uh, just one more. All right. Uh, this is my new stuff. Oh wait, no. This one looks like my new stuff. Yes, that is. Feed me subtask. That goes there. That goes there. Uh, that goes there. We're gonna say if the storage node is null, whatever. Deposit timer, yada yada, item stored. Um, I'm not even going to change names because we're going to be fixing this later. Whatever. Um, so we're going to go into the storage shed. Instead of storing an item, we're going to retrieve an item and then be done. And then eat it. Right? Because he should eat anything he pulls automatically. So, shed controller, not store, like we need a retrieve item. Uh, retrieve, it looks like we've never written that function. Retrieve item, not the inventory item, because we don't care about actually the inventory items he has. Um, we're just going to dive right into this storage shed. And we're going to retrieve an item whose type not C4, it's just K item food. And done. There we go. Uh, Linksnet, uh, I kind of went over this earlier, um, but the reason I picked C++ over C Sharp is that uh, I had an engine that fit my needs better than um, if I were to Retrieve. Oh, right. I never wrote this function. Um, let's see. Where's that storage shed controller? Um, uh, inventory item pointer. Uh, C4 type. Sorry, I keep getting. Um, distracted. <laughs> as I barely finish that sentence. Store item. Here we go. Uh, so it's just because I had an engine that fit my needs that happened to be written in C++. So there was really no need for me to go for C Sharp. Even though I'm stronger in that language, I don't, I'm not really more capable with it. Uh, so let's see here. It has... Oh, okay. <laughs> this is lazy. Um, this is really lazy. Whatever. Uh, we're going to say a switch based on the type. Case. Um, K item food. Right? That's the only thing we can really deposit right now. Everything else I don't really care about. So we're just going to say it's actually not an inventory item pointer. Um, I'm actually not even going to. Ah. Return new inventory item whose uh, k whose type is k item food whose name is food and whose weight is one and who's storable sure um, otherwise return a null pointer oh and we need to remove the food food stored minus minus Okay. <sighs> I see item stored. Okay, this is unnecessary. Um, so we're returning that inventory uh, item. So we need to make sure that we just delete. Uh, no, we don't want to delete the food right away, do we? We want to have the villager controller uh, add item to inventory item done and the one thing I just realized 
is that right now, if we eat the food, we're not actually, we should delete the item. Because we called new on it somewhere, and this is a good place because we're forgetting that the item exists afterwards. <sighs> have I entered any Ludum Dares? I have entered one to great effect. Um, but I haven't really, I actually haven't done anything with that yet. It was funny. I did a really good job of my Ludum Dare. I realized my music stopped a while ago. Whoops. Well, I'm almost done. Let's just test it. And once the test is done, this should work. There's that. Let's put some farms down. Ooh, Z fighting. Hello, my old friend. And by old friend, I mean not friend. Okay. So, we should see food start to go into the shed, and then as people get hungry, we should see food start to drain out of the shed. So there goes one guy. I see people with food who should be now heading back and they're okay stu food is getting stored five six seven okay how hungry are you guys now that is the question okay so you're headed back why are you starving they're sitting at the place and then they're not eating. They get an item. And what is this item? The item is food. The item type is food. And is hungry is coming back. Is hungry, are you wrong? The hunger remaining is less, no, that's fine. Um, this is so incredibly bizarre. Um, you are collecting a type of food and you're not hungry. Uh, what's going wrong? The AI, okay, let's, let's try this first. I'm going to put a spot in here first. So we're putting some breakpoints down just to make sure that everything here is acting as expected. Also, I'm putting down some items to make sure that food is getting generated at a rate. So big, if you've got so many questions about programming, I would say starting with a good book is really the way to go because you've got a lot of resources out there. Um, and, and really, uh, unfortunately, let's see here. So this, okay, you're fine. Interface, AI. So these people should be getting hungry. Okay, he hits this deposit timer. And if the deposit timer is greater than that. Okay, so this is just somebody. What? How is that? Okay, that's a deposit subtask, though. Like, this guy here is slowly starting to starve. And it's not telling me. Okay, it says he's moving. Where is that call coming from? Holy crap. Something is going terribly wrong here. Okay, so nobody is getting to the feed me subtask. Everybody's getting to the point where they walk up to the house and then they're proceeding to not. Let's see. Uh, AI. Add subtask. Okay, when you get a new job, if you are hungry and there is food, we'll start with that. Okay, so he's sowing the first seeds in this field.
So he's about to hit this point where he should... Okay, he's collecting food, so that's not a problem. You say that you are... Oh, it's because I've never added the subtask. I'm an idiot. Feed me job. Add subtask. New feed me subtask using the closest shed get target node that should do it they should actually eat now because they're arriving at the spot they're just never they were never actually doing the whole eating thing I was wondering why in heck they were just like standing around it and then proceeding to not do anything. I should stop putting farms down too. For every farm, that's a person who's going to be eating pretty regularly because they're sitting there picking up the food. Okay. Um, you. We're just kind of letting the game run in the background while I poke around just... behind the scenes. If you could make the people who are farming not hungry, that would probably... Yeah. It, it's they easier. just stockpile food, and they, if you assign people to just be farmers, or are you not assigning specific farmers? I'm not assigning specific farmers. People are just kind of taking jobs, and they say, oh, look, there's a field that needs... Plowing. Plowing. I'm going to go get all the food off of that field. Okay. Um, okay. Never mind. Feed me needed. subtask. So we've got, okay, so we can see here's the first instance of somebody who's getting hungry. And, okay, here's the first instance of somebody who's attempting to eat food, which is fantastic. We're going to wait for a certain amount of time to pass, which that time has now passed. They go into the shed, they retrieve an item, and that item is food. They go add that item to their inventory which makes them eat, they delete the item, and they're done. Nice. Okay. So here's a guy who's getting hungry. Uh, I'm looking for another guy who's going to get hungry soon, but I might have missed them all. Okay. We'll keep an eye on this. Dang it. <laughs> Where did he go? This guy. This. Come on. I'm trying to find somebody who's like cutting down trees, right? Because if I can find somebody who's cutting trees and who is going to get hungry soon. So, okay, here's a guy who's cutting wood, right? And you can see all these people doing the same thing, right? He's out cutting wood. He's getting hungry now. So he's going to travel here. His current job is storing resources. And then he should get hungry and eat. Ha! There he goes. He eats. Yes! We are done. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a fantastic stream. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much for joining me and putting up with my uh, little bit of um, kind of lacking all of my brain power here. And you can even see, actually, the food resource drops a little bit, which is fantastic. Anyway, thanks, guys, for joining me so much. I'm going to go off and stuff my face with burgers and fries and all kinds of delicious, delicious things. Uh, if you guys are first timers here or are, you know, repeat people, but you haven't followed me yet, please follow me. I love it when people do that just because I can have more people uh, helping me out as I do my thing. It's also great to have you guys here helping me out uh, just by keeping me motivated. Um, is that guy dead? No, he's probably just asleep. Yes. Although he might die from lack of eating because he's asleep. That actually would be hilarious um i need to fix that but whatever we'll fix that later that's a bug that we will fix oh no what happened oh we messed okay <laughs> whatever we uh, need more paper towels oh <laughs> uh, yeah we do we definitely do need more paper I'm gonna towels put these in the garage for yeah is he dead us? now he's getting there and kathud <laughs> he's dead yeah, so they sleep so long right now that they currently die of starvation while they're sleeping. We'll fix that later. <laughs> you should turn off the food meter while they're sleeping. Yeah, I know. I know. That I need to do. Oh, well. All right, guys. Thanks again for joining me. This has been a fantastic stream. Getting stuff uh, kind of thrown in. Um, you know, putting in something like uh, 
Yeah, what? This was supposed to be a little task, and yet it took me... Oh, gosh. Um, I think I started this at about 4, 3.30-ish, so it took me two and a half hours, just because it interacts with so many little subsystems. Um, and yeah, hunger over three is not the best estimate for I need to eat. Also, I need to stop them from starving while they sleep. Um, that's a pretty easy fix, but I'll, I'll get that done another time. So thanks again, guys, for joining me. Um, it has been a blast. Hopefully, I will see you guys next time. Uh, I want to get some streaming in tomorrow, but we'll see if that ends up happening or not. I've actually got a lot of stuff. Oh no, I think they're all dead. Okay, no, he's just actually asleep, but he's, yeah, he's going to starve in his sleep too. <laughs> we'll fix that. I will fix that. Um, all right, guys, thanks again. Take care, and uh, hopefully I will uh, catch you all next stream. Bye.